Hello, I'm Konstantin Rifkin. I'm one of the architects in the Microsoft 365 product group. I'm happy to present here the Microsoft 365 network connectivity principles as a part of the video series. We have a fairly packed agenda. We're going to look at some of the unique aspects of network connectivity for software as a service cloud, such as Microsoft 365. Uh, we're going to discuss what optimal connectivity look like, and then we're going to look deeper into the four principles that Microsoft has created to help customers optimize their connectivity to the cloud best. Before joining uh, Microsoft 365 product group, uh, I worked for quite some time in Microsoft IT organization where I was deploying productivity services for Microsoft own employees. And one thing I've learned uh, during these years is that the great user experience certainly starts with a great product. But when this product is delivered through the cloud, the optimal user connectivity to reach that product plays a pivotal role. So it is the last aspect of this crucial equation that we're gonna be focusing on uh, during the next uh, couple of minutes. But first setting the context, Microsoft provides a, a number of different cloud services, ranging from infrastructure as a service clouds, uh, Azure offerings, and going all the way through software as a service clouds, such as Microsoft 365. And when it comes to networking connectivity to these different cloud services, it is important to understand that the type of the cloud drives the right type of the network connectivity that the customers may want to optimize for. If we look at the infrastructure as a service clouds, the type of activities that these clouds are enabling the customers to do are mostly focused on the build type of activities. The IS cloud is an excellent uh, ground for the IT professionals to build the solutions, to establish their cloud tenancy, to use the virtual infrastructure and the virtual network building blocks to come up with their solutions that uh, their businesses need. When we look at the software as a service clouds, most of the solutions come prepackaged and the cloud tenancy is already deeply embedded in the application fabric of the software as a service cloud. Uh, again, comparing infrastructure as a service to software as a service, we also can notice that there is a difference in the type of concepts that both of these clouds embraced. For their infrastructure as a service cloud, the concepts are focused on region, compute, virtual network. Uh, in the software as a service cloud, the experience type of con uh, concepts dominate, such as collaboration, productivity, or user. Finally, when we translate those type of different cloud modalities to their customer own network designs, the infrastructure as a service cloud is traditionally being looked by customers as a virtual extension of the customer's own network. In contrast, software as a service cloud, the network is multi-tenant and is shared across many users and many tenants of that software as a service cloud. Which brings us to a very important conclusion that for infrastructure as a service, the service is built and optimized primarily for the private network connectivity. Whereas software as a service cloud is best consumed over the public internet connectivity. It's more optimized for that type of a consumption model. So this is the right part of this uh, continuum that we're gonna be focusing on. And we're gonna look at how does Microsoft 365 network connectivity principles apply to software as a service connectivity optimization. When we work with customers, uh, we hear a lot that network connectivity is a critical ingredient in their software as a service cloud journey. Efficient connectivity is also one of their biggest challenges that many enterprises have, both for connecting the on-premises environments to the cloud, in the area of empowering remote worker connectivity scenarios, and certainly engaging a variety of solution providers and partner solutions that provide network as a service and security as a service offerings. When we speak to customers, they often report that network connectivity is the leading cause of performance concerns, that network could be a bottleneck in the fast and easy onboarding into the cloud. And failures at the network level, either on the customer side or on the network provider side, can cause a fairly substantial impact on the SaaS experience for large quantities of users. In addition to that, customers report that their security teams are often challenged in securing the SaaS experiences and at the same time not impacting those experiences with intrusive network controls. 
At the same time, when we talk to IT teams, uh, we are seeing that IT teams are looking forward to modernize their network architectures and make it SaaS friendly without compromising security. They're looking to demonstrate a very quick return on investment in their network infrastructure to be able to deliver the most optimal user experience. And then finally, IT teams definitely want to make the network investments and designs future proof for the evolving nature of the software as a service cloud. So all of these themes drove us uh, to come up with uh, a set of principles that are designed to assist customers in evaluating their network solutions and then optimizing them for the purpose of delivering the best user experience possible. Before we look at the exact technical details, it may be helpful to understand why the user experience delivered by the software as a service cloud is so deeply integrated with their networking connectivity to the cloud itself. And the truth of the matter here is that in the world of SaaS, slow is the new broken. That is what we hear again and again from our customers, from largest enterprises, for consumers of the Microsoft 365 service. Latency is often being viewed as the main currency in the world of cloud performance. Once it is spent, it is very, very difficult to regain it and achieve optimal user experience. If we look at the end-to-end -end topology of users connecting and consuming software as a service cloud, uh, there are a number of elements in that topology that play a pivotal role in the performance experience. We start with the first mile which is something that we refer to as the infrastructure that the cloud service provider, such as Microsoft, is responsible for. As Microsoft 365, we're doing a lot of optimizations on the first mile of this topology, making their network connectivity and the user experience over that part as fast and as seamless as possible. However, on the last mile and the middle miles of the topology, this is where the customer has the biggest influence on the choice of the network architecture, the choice of the network solutions. And this is exactly the parts where we see a lot of their optimizations and decisions uh, around their optimal user experience that need to be made. Certainly, these decisions can influence the backhauling distances that the user connection has to travel before it reaches the cloud. Uh, the processing overhead that uh, many customers may still have on their perimeter network can also impact the user performance. And then the, finally, the choice of the solution provider, be it internet service provider or a network solution provider, uh, their peering and routing policies can also have a fairly substantial impact on the end-to-end -end user experience. So this three-legged equation and solving it optimally is one of the key objectives that we put in uh, Microsoft 365 network connectivity principles. One of their key considerations uh, that we start with when we talk to customers about what Office 365 is and Microsoft 365 is as it gets projected on enterprise connectivity is the fact that the location of Microsoft 365 is literally everywhere. Their objective that Microsoft 365 is pursuing is to get as close to all, all users on the planet as possible. Closeness is directly relevant to their performance and the experience that the users are getting with our services. And there are three critical elements that uh, we invest in in order to achieve that global proximity. The first one is the Microsoft Global Network, which has highly distributed points of presence, excellent and evolving peering ability with many of the internet service providers, as well as the backhauling capabilities that allow the network connections to be backhauled across the Microsoft network to their right data center, uh, instead of taxing the customer owned network for these type of operations. In addition to their Microsoft global network, another critical element of the experience is the distributed service front door infrastructure. You can think about the front door infrastructure is the place where the user connections are terminated and most of their performance sensitive user experiences are rendered. And then finally, another critical ingredient here is their intelligent content and business placement uh, that Microsoft 365 performs uh, within its first mile network in order to optimize the user experience even further. One critical observation that we can make is that this picture is not static. 
Software as a Service Cloud and Microsoft 365 in particular is attempting to get closer and closer to users every day. In this particular sense, uh, the proximity can be accomplished by uh, advancing and expanding the Microsoft network peering locations, the front door infrastructure, as well as using even more distributed data center infrastructure where the data is placed and processed. The imperative for the customer is to be able to take advantage of these investments and allow the users to connect to the Microsoft 365 ecosystem as close to the user as possible. So it is the left side of this equation that we're going to be talking about when we review the key Microsoft 365 connectivity principles. When we developed the principles, we wanted to make it very, very simple for our customers to use those to both evaluate their own existing network solutions, as well as to optimize their network connectivity for the cloud. The four principles are designed to work together and unlock the best experience that the network solution can deliver end to end. And we're going to walk through each of these principles one by one to understand the deep meaning of that and the impact that it can have on the performance and the end user experience with our services. The first principle is calling to optimize Microsoft 365 traffic by recognizing it at the network solution level and treating it accordingly. Uh, Microsoft 365 created a, a set of definitions which for the network solution uh, are focused on FQDNs and IP address definitions for major Microsoft 365 services such as Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Teams, etc. These definitions are delivered to customers and partners through a set of scalable REST APIs that allow the customer and partner community to automate these network settings. One unique thing about these definitions is that we included the priority driven endpoint taxonomy allowing the customers to prioritize some of the most critical Microsoft 365 experiences uh, and optimize for them even harder. And we're happy to report that we worked with uh, a wide uh, ecosystem of their partners who provide native integration of that API into their products and allow customers to recognize and configure appropriate Microsoft 365 treatment with a click of a button. So IT admins uh, do not necessarily have to manually consume this information. They can leverage many of the partner solutions to automate this in their own environments and keep this up to date. The second principle calls for enabling local internet-based egress from the location where the customer has users into Microsoft Global Backbone. The principle of the local egress ensures that the requests for most performance sensitive Microsoft 365 applications are not being backhauled across private WAN, but rather use their direct internet connections to reach their destinations quicker. The local egress maximizes the chance that the connection is going to be routed through the Microsoft closest network points of presence and achieve the best performance. At the same time, this principle also suggests that the DNS egress for Microsoft 365 domains should also be configured to egress locally, preferably through the proximate local DNS servers performing the recursive resolver functionality. And this part of the principle is important to make sure that the traffic management decisions that the cloud makes directs the user traffic to the closest set of front doors for even better performance. Principle number three, uh, takes this to a, a new level. In addition to the local connectivity, this principle calls to enable direct connectivity specifically for Microsoft 365 connections. This principle allows routing of Microsoft 365 connections directly to Microsoft without any type of network intermediation. This is shown on the bottom diagram as flow number three. Intermediation, which is sending connections through a third party intermediary, which could be a security as a service cloud or an on-premise solution, or maybe a, a gateway running in the infrastructure as a service cloud, uh, may have impact on achievable performance, availability, and interoperability. But probably the biggest positive impact of the direct connectivity is the potential that future advancements and improvements of uh, the Microsoft 365 cloud automatically accrue to customers 
and users who are allowed to connect to us directly. In this particular diagram, it shows that as Microsoft continues to expand its points of presence, advancements of its front door infrastructure, covering more and more geographies, attempting to come closer and closer to the user communities, the direct connectivity ensures that these type of investments automatically accrue to these users, automatically reducing the latency and improving the end user experience, which suggests that direct connectivity makes the network design future proof and allows the cloud benefits to accrue to the end user experience automatically. When we started comparing different architecture models in this diagram, one, two, three, and four, we used uh, latency as one of the key performance indicators. And what we discovered, which is shown in this diagram, is that as we compare different indirect options of connecting to Microsoft 365 and compare them to directly connected uh, architectures, we see that there is a fairly drastic impact in the achievable latency envelope. So this diagram represents a distribution function of a percentage of users who are experiencing certain latency envelope. Uh, and as we can see, the network topologies that have intermediation properties, either through a security as a service cloud or through an infrastructure as a service cloud, uh, they generally exhibit worse latency and performance characteristics than the direct connectivity uh, options. We tend to look at the 90th percentile as their measuring stick uh, and as a proxy of the true user experience with many of our uh, productivity services. And the difference between the direct architecture choice of network connection and an intermediated or indirect uh, could be 100 or more milliseconds, which is quite substantial impact on the user experience. The fourth and the last principle of uh, Microsoft 365 network connectivity is focused on the role of the network security and their imperative to modernize the security specifically for the SaaS scenarios. When we talk to customers about the security aspirations, we constantly hear that uh, their traditional network perimeter focused security approaches, they do struggle with maintaining the rich and consistent security protection and experience with SaaS applications specifically, largely due to the growing impact of their traditional network controls to the user experience, but also uh, due to recognized limited security effectiveness about reasoning on complex user experiences that uh, SaaS clouds deliver. One of the key recommendations that this principle makes is to shift the focus of security controls away from traditional network security inspection capabilities more into the zero trust architecture, which is using additional security dimensions, many of which are built natively into the SaaS application itself. We're talking about leveraging signals and capabilities on the user identity, device, workload, and data aspects. All of these categories may act like additional colorful lenses that combine signals and attribute to the most rich and meaningful security visibility, and at the same time, uh, most optimal security outcomes. This could be illustrated by this diagram, where the traditional network perimeter inspection uh, may be still effective for internet browsing or internet application access, where connectivity to software as a service applications such as Microsoft 365 benefits more from leveraging the zero trust categories to evaluate signals and achieve the security outcomes that are contextual to the application itself. One of the realization of that principle is the need to identify and differentiate different types of network connections as closely to the user as possible. This is where we believe the best value in security and user experiences can be achieved when different connections with different performance in the security contexts are treated differently. This motion of differentiation closer to the user has the highest value for most performance sensitive apps, such as Microsoft 365. And we're happy to see that that type of capability and differentiation is being built natively in many of the SD-WAN platforms so that the customers don't have to do it manually, but can consume these type of outcomes as a part of their SD-WAN uh, product adoption. 
One important observation that uh, we are making with our enterprises is that as they go through looking at these network connectivity principles, they have a broad applicability uh, across a number of network engagement modalities. Certainly, customers are considering these principles in their enterprise net network designs for both branch office and now recently in remote and mobile user experiences. So these principles for direct and local connectivity, specifically for Microsoft 365 performance sensitive connections, uh, transform both the branch office and the home mobile user experiences as far as the network connectivity is concerned. We are also seeing that these principles are being adopted by a large number of network solution partners. We recently created uh, a networking partner program which is designed to specifically engage uh, and promote these network connectivity principles in our partner networking focused solutions. Again, with a single goal that the customers can get the benefits of these principles automatically. And then finally, uh, the output of these principles is finding these reflections in the Microsoft native admin and user facing tools. The two primary examples here is the Microsoft 365 admin portal, which has a separate section devoted for network performance and the insights that are being collected and provided to tenant administrators, they go directly into uh, the network connectivity principle alignment. And then finally, their user facing tools such as connectivity.office.com allows the end user to measure the network performance uh, and their experience with Microsoft 365 and see how close is their network service aligned with those principles. In conclusion, I'd like to call some recommended actions and provide some additional pointers to resources. Uh, one of the key objectives for achieving delightful user experience as we started uh, this session about is to uh, complement the great Microsoft 365 product with the optimal connectivity that the users need to connect to it. So the first step that we advise our enterprise customers to do is to evaluate the network for SaaS cloud readiness and compare the key elements of the existing network solutions that the customer have uh, with the connectivity principles and look for alignment. When the customers are looking to invest in their network performance, uh, these principles can also help to guide the most crucial decision, uh, both in terms of architecture patterns, investment areas, and in many cases, the choice of a partner networking solution. Finally, uh, we encourage customers to use the Microsoft native tools to both monitor and observe uh, their network scoring uh, capabilities, which are a direct reflection of the efficiency that uh, the customer network solution exhibits for the Microsoft 365 experiences. You can find more information at their aka.ms PNC. In conclusion, I wanted to go back and reiterate the point that uh, we started with in this presentation, that uh, delightful user experience is a combination of the great product and the optimal user connectivity. So hopefully, you found the information in this section useful to achieve both outcomes. Thank you.